Hello and welcome to Tom's Attic Attack, where I take a look at trading cards, comic book adaptations, storybooks, souvenir magazines, and so much more surrounding all your film favorites of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and beyond. Trading cards have been around for quite some time now, and some have great value. Tops is one of the most well-known and respected companies to produce cards, sports and non-sports cards alike. For about 80 years now, Tops has been around. Trading cards have their origin just post-Civil War and were generally given out with tobacco products, which makes sense because Tops started out as a tobacco company, but flourished when they switched to gum in 1938. In 1953, Tops countered main competitor Fleer's Double Bubble with Bazooka, tagged as the Atom Bubble Gum. Tops quickly became a leading candy maker famous for ring pops, push pops, and other confections. In 1949, though, they changed pop culture forever by introducing 252 magic photo cards. These were images that magically appeared on blank 7 8 inch by 13 8 inch cards when they were moistened and exposed to light. They were freebies inside packs of gum. In 1951, Topps became the premier card company producing baseball cards. Topps wasn't just sports, which they did have great success in all areas, including football and baseball. But in 1950, Hopalong Cassidy would grace Topps for the first time, and the rest is history. Before long, sets revolving around icons such as Elvis Presley, The Beatles, original material like Mars Attacks, and eventually Garbage Pail Kids, along with historical events like Desert Storm, graced Topps cards. On Tom's Attic, I will be going through the pop culture, movie, and television cards from Topps and their competitors. Several of these were produced by Topps and other companies in other countries outside of the U.S. This would cause some variations, but I will be concentrating mainly on the U.S. sets, unless stated otherwise. Movies, of course, were a big part of Topps non-sports cards products. Most of the Topps movie card sets consisted of stickers and cards and were packaged in wax packs with a stick of gum. The average pack held between 8 and 10 cards and 1 or 2 stickers. We will cover many classics over the course of these videos and shorts, but today we're jumping to 1990, when Topps was at the absolute top of their game on the sports and non-sports front. And Turtle Power was everywhere. Those who know me, this is a fitting start. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie took everybody by surprise when it was released in the spring of 1990, becoming the most profitable independent film of all time until it was dethroned by the Blair Witch Project about nine years later. This wasn't even the first set of cards dedicated to the Heroes in a Half Shell, but more on that in later videos. The 1990 TMNT Wax Packs, seen here, consisted of nine cards and one sticker in the U.S. A lot of the time, Topps would give you the opportunity to collect a complete set of stickers or a section of cards to piece together a poster. In this case, though, they did not. The back is a bit more reminiscent of older Topps sets that were blank or just instructed you on how to use the stickers. Here's a quick look at the box that the cards came in. This set was made up of 132 cards and 11 stickers. Tops, from time to time, would do deluxe versions of their sets and had nice glossy fronts and high quality card stock. Some would even come with exclusive bonus cards. Not this time out, but it did get a special box. As you see here though, they did have some behind the scenes cards, but they were in the regular set. The set does a really good job of capturing the story of the film, and it's filled out well in the larger card run. Most would average around 88. The fact that a 90-minute movie would get nearly twice that is extra sweet. Although we never did get a second series, we didn't really need one because this one was so packed. We even get a look at a few deleted bits in a scene where the turtles cover their eyes and learn how to fight using their senses. And notice here, they have the wrong characters label, though it's easy to see where they could get confused. Like this one is actually Donatello, not Leo. This one is actually Leo, not Donatello. Uh, this one is actually Mikey and not Raph. And well, you get the idea. It can happen, especially considering they probably only had a script to work from at the time. Sometimes you'll get an image out of place. Like this one meant for a line leading to the third act of the film, but the image is from the first act where the crew is eating pizza. You can even kind of see the tip of the pizza pizza in front of Michelangelo's mouth. And like these two here after the turtles meet April, this is actually from the scene later when Raph wakes up in the tub at April's farm, not at her apartment as it suggests. This shot here is actually after Leo is startled by the symbols during Raph's rooftop fight, not when they discover Splinter has been kidnapped. It's actually in April's antique shop. Overall, this is a really great set and a really nice time capsule, and it's a cool way to relive the moments of the film. The video took over a half a year as usual to come out, so this is all we kind of had besides book and uh, 
comic adaptations, which we will also look into here on Tom's Attic Attacks. So stay tuned for more videos where we cover other things besides cards. Speaking of, we have so many more turtles and tops and their competitors to go through. I hope you continue to enjoy these shorts and videos. Let me know what you think in the comments and cowabunga.